<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who believe they have encountered a cryptid slash otherworldly creatures, rake, crawler, etc., what are your stories? One day, I was hunting alone in the woods. It was snowing as always. I was looking for elk or deer. I went to a snowy area and buried myself in snow to cover my scent. A few hours pass, and I see nothing, but I have a feeling I'm not alone. As I look around, I see something dart into a pine tree, something big. Well, better look, I think to myself. I move my rifle scope to the tree and scan the area. I see something emerge, and I adjust my aim. I see the fur and pull the trigger, but instead of seeing it drop, I hear a horrible scream that booms through the woods. I jump at the sound, and then, as if it were filled with rage, the thing standing on two legs runs towards me. It's on two legs, and I start running towards my house. I run to the deck and aim at the cryptid thing, pulling the trigger once more. I manage to wound it enough to where it starts off into the woods. As I shoot another bullet into it, I see it look back at me. It has a pale face, white eyes, and almost daggers like needles for teeth. This event happened on January 3, 2016 to the north of Fort Bennett, Alaska. The legends there refer to a Wendigo, a Native American legend. I will never return to that clearing again. I was on a backcountry road in North Carolina before dawn, heading to work. There was a lot of vast farmland out there, and the wood line was close to the road, but there were a lot of shrubs and bushes. I was going about 45 miles per hour because I didn't want to hit any deer and had my high beams on. All of a sudden, this thing appears in the shrubs and bushes. I can only best describe it as a weird bear slash dog thing. It was just sitting there with its arms to its side. It had a long snout and red eyes. It was snarling. It also had dark fur that was about 3 inches long. I have never had something scare me so badly. My brain couldn't register what I was seeing so quickly. It made me shake. I turned my car around and went back to ensure I wasn't crazy, but I never saw it again. I'm not sure if it was sitting there eating a dead animal or what, but I guess I'll never know. Me and an ex-biker boyfriend went exploring old farms out here in West Texas. We came into an area that, although extremely sparsely lit previously, moon, distant communication towers, etc., became pitch black. I couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Moon disappeared. I can't explain how dark it got at this one four-way stop sign intersection and for about a half mile in every direction. He stopped the bike to readjust and put on gloves about 100 feet from the stop sign with our backs to the intersection. The only light was the tail light of the bike. I looked back. Because I got an awful feeling and I saw the stop sign reflecting the light, then an even blacker shadow, somehow it was even more solid, passed in front of the stop sign and blocked out the entire sign from top to bottom for about half a second before it kept moving on. Those signs are like 8 feet tall and 3 feet wide, and this thing was much larger than that. I have never seen or felt anything less human than this before or since. This is taking into account other supernatural encounters that don't quite fit into this category. For what it's worth, and maybe that isn't much, for whatever reason, when that thing walked in front of the sign, I got a picture in my head of either a bull or a minotaur type of creature. I didn't see it, just projected imagery. I live in rural southern Nevada. A buddy of mine and I encountered what we decided to be a skinwalker one night while we were sharing a bottle of whiskey. It was late, I was living towards the edge of town, fairly close to the open desert. I don't remember the time, I'd estimate between 12 and 2 am a buddy of mine comes over and decides to spend the night drinking and hanging out with me. We were in the living room, sitting near the side of the house, right next to a couple closed and blinded windows. We'd been on the topic of the paranormal slash cryptids when we began discussing Navajo slash Southern Paiute skinwalker lore. We're about an hour into that topic and about a quarter into the fifth I had, swimmy but not quite drunk drunk, when we began hearing a faint but distinguishable pitter-patter directly outside the window, pacing back and forth the length of the side of the house. We were buzzing enough to semi-dismiss it until we began to hear hyena-esque cackling. At that point, we figured that we had attracted one to us by speaking of them, which is a staple of their lore, so we decided the best course would be to not acknowledge it and carry on with our conversation until it left. The paw-like pacing and cackling continued for another 45 minutes or so and eventually stopped. Neither one of us was willing to open the blinds or go outside until the morning, but when we woke up and went outside, not only did we see dog prints lining the dirt directly outside of the windows, but we also saw a set of abnormally large human-like footprints that ran from near the carport to the center of the yard before the track stopped dead, and each footprint was smaller and less imprinted. To this day, we are positive that we attracted or summoned a skinwalker. Even if that's not the correct cryptid, 
I know for a fact that there was something outside of the house that night. When I was five or six years old, I was at a lonely playground right next to some trees to our left, sitting on swings with the older brother of my friend, who was seven or eight. All of a sudden, he jumped off his swing and ran as fast as he could. Surprised by the situation, I looked to my left to see where those trees were. I could see a white being hiding behind a bush, which was very thin and looked like a ghost. His face was visible above that bush. We looked at each other for a few seconds, and I could notice it moving its head slightly forward and back. As soon as I realized why the dude ran away, I did the same. I was scared as hell. Since I didn't know the older brother that well, we never talked about that moment. No one of my friends or family would believe what we just saw. I worked as a bartender for about 5 years. I would usually get out around 3 or 4 am on weekends. One bar I worked it was next to a small portion of the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. It was a Saturday night. Some of my friends would usually hang out with me at the bar until I got out. So we were all talking, and I was moving some just clean glasses around. I randomly looked outside and saw two red dots in the woods, about 4 inches apart but evenly leveled. So I'm staring at these things, thinking, what the heck are those? When all of a sudden the two dots rose up about 7 feet in the air, and I could see that the red things were probably eyes because I saw a silhouette shape of something crouching underneath them when it suddenly stood tall. It was darker than the darkness around it in the woods, so it was the darkest thing I've ever seen. Suddenly, it turned to its left and started walking farther into the woods. Of course, none of my friends saw it, I didn't have time to point it out. So they didn't believe me. But I know what I saw. I really, fervently don't believe in the Jersey Devil. After this encounter, I remembered what my 7th grade science teacher told me about actually somewhat interacting with a Bigfoot-esque creature in South Jersey. I also read some stories similar to mine in an issue of Weird NJ magazine taking place on Delcy Drive, on a stretch of about 50 miles. They had reported red eyes as well. I was around 11, and we lived on a farm in the countryside, Paso del Toro, Bulls Pass, in the Mexican state of Veracruz, on the east coast of Mexico. We were coming back home from my school, which was some 10 minutes away from the farm, and my mom was singing to the tune of Lost in Love by Air Supply when she suddenly hit the brakes and drove the truck into a ditch. She was terrified, screaming that she had almost killed him. What? She saw a small child-looking entity, but it was dressed in old formal clothes, a black suit, and one of those round hats from the 1800s. She saw it running from between the bushes to the right side and into the ditch on the left, and when she got out, she just heard laughing, but there was no one there. Later on, one of the farm hands told my mom that it was a shinek and that it was a common occurrence in those parts, that they were not inherently evil, but they were mischievous, they are similar, or may even be the same, just from other latitudes, as pixies, they are childlike, in some accounts, like my mom's, and they like to lead people astray, you should wear a shirt or sweater upside down to get rid of them, etc. My grandmother's neighbor said he saw something weird once. My grandmother lives next to a graveyard, and her neighbor lives across the street. He was out on his front porch one night around 10 p.m. He was just sitting there, rocking back and forth, when he saw something slink along the fence in front of the graveyard. The street lights were on, but this thing was covered in shadow. He said his first thought was that it was a very large cat, but his instincts told him that there was something not right here. Finally, the creature, or whatever it was, reached the corner of the fence at the end, and the neighbor thought it was going to turn the corner and disappear out of sight. But what the creature did next caught him completely by surprise. He said this thing started to climb straight up the fence, like an enormous, deformed squirrel. And he said it indeed looked deformed. He no longer thought it was a cat. He described it as being all white and sickly skinny, and its arms and legs looked disjointed like they had been broken and were bent at weird angles. It moved very quickly up the fence but made jerky movements sort of the way a chameleon walks, he said. Then it disappeared on the other side of the fence. The neighbor said he didn't see it again but he was so frightened that he slept with his shotgun by his bed for weeks afterwards. And that night, his outdoor dogs barked and barked. What scares me is my poor little old grandmother living right next to this graveyard, and possibly whatever this creature was. Then again, who knows what he saw. The neighbor was elderly himself, he passed away two years ago, and perhaps it really was a cat or maybe a fox or something, and it was diseased. It still creeps me out, though. I had a hard time sleeping after hearing about it and I forget ever trying to sleep at grandma's. I thought it was bad when she lived next to a graveyard. Suddenly, I had to start worrying about weird creatures in the night. Last year in coastal swampy Georgia I was driving down a long, rural, wooded road to work just before dusk. I always went slow and careful because there were so many deer in this area. 
I saw movement to my left coming from the woods and slowed a little. Ten feet in front of my car, two wolf-looking beings crossed the road in perfect unison or synchronicity. They looked like your stereotypical movie werewolf, upright on two legs, and stepped into the wooded swamp on the other side. I was at an almost dead stop with brights on and saw this as clear as anything. I couldn't even think straight enough to grab my camera right next to me. I lived on the edge of a huge expanse of woods. I spent a lot of time in the woods with my friends. We'd find the normal dead animal carcass, weird fire circles set up by the local rednecks or meth heads, and other basic inner wood stuff. So one night I was going through some normal teenage angst, and I was sitting on the roof, obviously, looking at the stars. It's a mostly full moon that I can see through the trees, and it's really chill up there. Nice early autumn breeze. I'm chill as duck. My mom and little sister were sitting outside in the hot tub, right under the edge of the roof in front of me. I hear them get up to go in, and I'm still relaxing. You know the feeling where you know something is looking at you? It's different from the regular spoopy vibe you'll get. It's something in your brain that doesn't care about reason or reality TV. He's going to hit a woman over the head and take her back to the cave while you feast on the freshly killed bear he killed with his own hands and part of your brain. All of a sudden, my relaxation was gone. I immediately know something is not ducking okay. I know something is staring at me, and it would like nothing better than to eat my scrawny ass. Just for reference. There's the edge of the roof, about another 6 feet of deck, and then 20 feet of yard until our 6 feet privacy fence. We set up the privacy fence in front of this shitty chain link fence that was there before we moved in because, you know, meth heads. And then behind the fence is a ton of shitty bushes and shrubs, and right behind that are trees. I start to scan the fence, and I notice something directly in front of where I was. Keep in mind that my mom and little sister would have been between me and it. So I notice this outline. All I see is the black of the shrubs and trees, and then right above the privacy fence is what looks like this brown colored outline of a head and shoulders. My first thought was, the duck? Is someone standing on the chain link fence looking over? That thing rattles like a mother ducker when I climb on it, so it can't be that. Apparently, my feet had gotten under me and I started moving my ass towards the edge of the roof without consulting my brain. I get to the edge of the roof, just looking at this outline, when I hear a scream from a horror movie monster. Imagine if you shoved a bear, a cougar, and one of those screech owls into a mosh pit and recorded the noises, then added some heavy distortion to it. I remember instantly turning and running to the opposite side of the roof, parkoured off that crap, and ran inside crying to my mom. So I was back over there last summer, helping my stepdad do some renovations, and I brought this story up. I showed him where I saw it, and I even climbed up on the roof to show him how tall it was. It turns out that the thing was almost 8 feet tall and had crazy broad shoulders. Like 3 and something feet wide. Stepdad did the normal thing of oh it's nothing, just go look up the sounds one of these animals makes and get back with me. Bear? Nope. Cougar? Nope. Fox? Nope. Owls? You get the trend. I couldn't find a single animal that sounded like it. Ten or so years ago, I was driving with my brother in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It was late at night, and we were going to grab some food. We were the only cars on this road, which wasn't abnormal due to the time of night. The right side of the road was wooded with trees, and on the left was a fence that ran parallel to the road. A giant wolf-like creature ran full speed in front of the car. It came from the right wooded area and was heading towards the fence. This thing was at least 12 feet tall. It was hunched over, running insanely fast on its back legs. The legs were bent backward and extremely muscular. The only way I could describe it was that they were bent backwards in a way that demon legs are depicted. The thing never turned to look at us. It was running towards the fence, jumped, and cleared it. I have never seen anything jump so high. I spent the next couple of moments trying to process what I saw. I thought there was some kind of logical explanation until my brother said, did you see that? and described in detail exactly what I had seen. The only thing that differed was that he saw what he described as long claws emerging. Seeing this thing terrified me. Ten years later, I am still terrified. So I live somewhere in between country and town here in Florida and see an abundance of wildlife. Foxes, coyotes, and raccoons are all very normal to see. Since there is a large fox population around here and most people have chickens, everyone has large dogs, including me. I have a 70-pound boy and a 60-pound girl pit bull. They're fearless. They know this is their property, and they protect it as such, alerting me if they hear something. And if they do, I open the door, and they run out to chase off whatever it is. The other night, I woke up randomly, and it was disturbingly quiet outside. Like not a single cricket. 
and my dogs were not on my bed like they usually are. All of a sudden, a howl like I had never heard went off like a siren that sent a chill down my spine. Like a deep yell, almost, but definitely from an animal. I turned the lights on in my house to see my pit bulls at the back of their dog crate. I've never seen a look on my dog's face like that before. Purely terrified. So I turned all the lights back off, grabbed a flashlight, and looked out my back window. What I saw about 200 yards off by a tree line near the back of my property was a dog thing. I vaguely saw it, but it was very similar to a hyena with a large amount of fur on its neck, like a mane almost and skinny back legs. Its head looked very wolf-like, with erect ears and a large skull. It was ducking huge. It was so black that it was hard to make out distinct characteristics, but its presence scared basically any living thing that was around it that night. The next morning I went to the spot and saw the animal, but I saw no tracks, hair, or anything else. I know what I saw and have never seen anything like it before. We've been having a lot of dead dogs in the area. Dogs that are large and are being killed by something. Other people think it's the coyotes or a feral dog, but I think it's that thing I saw. Just seeing my dog so terrified really scared me. This is something I encountered when I was about 9 years old, in late 2005 or early 2006. We moved into this modular home, think a trailer but on an actual brick foundation, in a rural area of Virginia in the summer of 2004. It was me, my mom, my dad, my older sister, her husband, and their child or my niece. I stayed home alone a lot after school and on weekends due to everyone having to work and my niece going to the babysitter's house. It was never that big of a deal because my grandma lived right across the driveway, we lived down a long gravel driveway that was off of the main road. It was after my dad died in April of 2005. I was home alone after school one day, watching the weekenders. All of a sudden, our huge golden lab slash boxer mix, Rudy, that we kept chained in the barkyard started to bark. It was not his usual hey. I'm out of food or water or coral bark, but it was a violent, scary bark. I looked out the sliding glass door that goes to the barkyard and saw him at the end of his chain, trying to break loose and get at something in the woods. I can't really see what he's trying to get at until, all of a sudden, some creature walks out of the woods and stops right at the tree line. It was about four feet tall, walked on all fours, its body was similar to a bear, it had brown fur, but its face was its most distinct feature. It was solid white and completely flat. It had two black slits where its eyes would be. It looked in my direction, and I remember just being overcome with fear and dread when it looked over at me. I started to shake. I was so scared. Before I could even get off the couch to get to the landline to call my mom, it just slowly backed back into the woods. Rudy was barking and growling the entire time it was standing there, which was about two minutes total, and for at least ten minutes after it left my sight, before he finally calmed down. I called my mom, my sister, my aunt, and my uncle, who lived behind my grandma, and then my grandma before somebody answered. She told me to walk over, but I was too scared to go outside, so she came and got me. As a kid, I called it a white-faced anteater, and my family just dismissed me as seeing things, even though my dog had seen it too and was trying to get to it. My uncle told me it was probably a big-ass possum, but I knew damn well what a possum looked like, and that won't be it. To this day, I'm 23 now, I still have nightmares where all I see is this thing standing in my yard at the tree line, staring at me. I grew up in the middle of butt duck nowhere, surrounded by woods and swamps. I've seen everything from humanoid creatures to completely unexplainable animals. One night I had a giant dog chase my car, and when I pulled over at a church to let it maybe pass me, it jumped on my car. Left scratches on the top of the car. I kid you not, it was almost the size of my car. And at the time, I had a four-door Honda sedan. It didn't try to get in or anything, but it shook my car up a little bit and scared me shitless. This one happened a long time ago. I used to go on picnics with my grandmother and her dog. We had a basket and a blanket, and we would pack little sandwiches and stuff and go out to the back pasture near the big cedar tree. One day, we were doing just that. We had already sat down and started playing sniper when my grandma started acting weird and packing things up. Then her dog just went ballistic. Growling, barking, yelping, and acting completely crazy. This dog. I had never seen her act weird. I don't even think she was a dog most of the time, she was so human. So I was starting to freak out a little, and then we saw it. My memory gets very fuzzy here, but there was a really tall creature with grey skin coming out of the creek or tree line and looking at us. My grandma picked me up and booked it. My grandma believes a lot of things. This is one of the few things she won't even talk about. This happened in Minnesota. In the summer of 2016, I was interning at a church in the small city of Mound, Minnesota. 
The city is basically out on Lake Minnetonka. Sometimes my wife would ride out with me if I needed to pick something up or get something done. This particular evening, I had to do something at the church quickly, so we ran out there. Afterwards, we decided to go on a walk. The road we were on. It was between the church and Dutch Lake, I'm fairly sure. We parked and got out of the car. The time was somewhere between 7.30 and 9 p.m. We locked the car and started walking and talking. After about three minutes or so, we were up at the farmhouse. This is where my wife saw something. In the middle of a sentence, she stopped. And I took a couple steps ahead. Then she asked me if I saw that with urgency. I turned my head to the yard in front of the farmhouse. What I saw was a stick figure looking thing. About two feet tall with arms and legs about one foot long. No features at all. It was a cloudy black color, striding across the yard smoothly. It started on the ground from where I saw it, and as it went, it gradually rose to be about one to two feet off the ground, still striding in the air. Then it just disappeared in front of our eyes, as if it went through a portal or something like that. In talking later on, we figured that from where she first spotted it, it traveled 50 feet, give or take. As soon as it disappeared, I told her we needed to get out of here. We felt this overwhelming sense of fear overcome us. We booked it for the car. I whipped a U-turn, and we got out of there as fast as we could. We sat in silence for a long time before we talked about what we saw on the way home. My friend Will lives off this highway somewhat deep into the woods, it doesn't take much time to get to his house, but there's pretty thick wood surrounding his house and neighborhood. We were driving home from his house around 11 p.m., and my friends in the front seat saw this strange creature cross the road. They said it had a capybara-like face, a very long neck, no tail or ears, walked like an ape, and looked like a human trying to walk on all fours. They also said it had no really defining features and seemed to be disproportionate and unnatural looking in general, and that it had human-like legs. They did not see the feet. It did not have much fur, but the fur there was kind of like that of a short-haired dog. It had a large hunchback, like it could stand up and walk normally at any second. My friend will also actually saw a creature of the same description a few years ago. I've been trying to find an animal that it might be, but my friends keep saying that it's not it. I've looked into some popular cryptids like the Wendigo and Crawlers, but those didn't seem right. It had animal features but also some very human-like features. My great-uncle owns a lot of land in northern Saskatchewan, Canada. Some of this was pasture that he used for cattle, but half of one of his largest properties is fenced off, and the cows can't go there. In the sectioned-off lactose-free zone, the entire place is densely packed with foliage, I mean, when I hunt, I almost only use game trails and small clearings because a lot of the brush is too thick to get through without a machete. We've always had lots of wildlife, like big cats and bears, that could harm people, so since I was young, I learned to recognize the sounds and sights around me, and while cautious, I am rarely afraid of anything out there, especially given that I am usually armed when I am not with multiple people. It was peaceful, and being summer, I filled the days with woodworking fishing trips, the occasional hike looking for berries, and setting traps for rabbits, grouse, and other small game that could be prepared quickly over the fire with my family, but mostly came up unlucky. Regardless of the seeming lack of disturbances, we were always careful at night, making sure to have a bright light and keep an eye out for anything. After the first week, we began hearing noises around the camp very late at night that would drive the dog insane all night, to the point where we just had to keep her inside but never saw anything. It almost felt like whatever it was was probing and checking out our camp nightly, but always staying far enough away and hidden enough that we could never see it with our spotlights. Then one night, just like any other, bar the eerie quietness that usually came around that time, I left my mother's camper a couple hours after the daylight had disappeared with a lantern-style lead light, and as a rarity, I didn't have anything to defend myself, no gun, no bear spray, not even a knife, so I was a little bit more cautious and observant than usual given that I felt more vulnerable. As I walked from the exit of my mom's camper, I looked around for a minute, scanning the tree line, and then began the loop around to my door. I panned as I walked from right to left from the entrance to the fire pit and then to the table. It was there, just behind the table, not 20 feet away, that I saw a naked, extremely pale, almost gray, probably just because of the dark, lanky humanoid figure standing still and directly facing me. As it caught my gaze, I felt my heart drop and immediately go cold. I probably only stared for three seconds at most, but it felt like several minutes as my brain processed what I was seeing. It stood somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 feet tall with low, slumped shoulders and a frail, thin body. I couldn't see the legs fully because of the table, but what I could see looked like sinew and skin stretched over the leanest and thinnest body I've ever seen. I couldn't describe the primal fear and shock that came over me, 
It was like a combination of the feeling you get from being threatened at gunpoint and hearing something stalk you in the woods, but it ramped up to the point where I could barely think. I couldn't make out many details of the face, but the light cast small shadows on it that made it look like it had shallow features similar to a nose, lips, and eye sockets that were smoothed down. I ran like my life depended on it the last few feet to my door. Once inside, I grabbed the shotgun, stuffed several shells in my pocket, loaded the gun, and aimed it at the door. I sat in silence with the hammer and walked back, waiting for the door knob to turn or the frosted glass to break. I sat and waited for hours into the early morning, expecting to see or hear something, but I never did, not even any foliage or items moving. Eventually, around 4 a.m., I lowered my guard, propped the shotgun next to my bed, and hesitantly went to sleep. When I woke up, I could hardly believe what I had seen the night before. I was around the area to see if there were any shapes or items that I could have mistaken and warped in my mind into the creature I saw, but the only thing in that area was a table with some pots and pans on it that were blackened from the fire. Last summer, in July, I was visiting my brother, who happens to live in northern Michigan in a town called Rapid City. The place itself is pretty close to the Traverse State Forest area, where a long road runs through it called Supply Road. This road has thick forests and brush on both sides, with occasional farms. We had gone down south to Fife Lake, which is only about a 30-minute drive from where he lived. He wanted to show me around the area and the lake itself and have some fun with photography. It was about 9 p.m. when we finally decided to call it a day, and it was pretty dark at this point. On the way back, we're both like, duck it, let's drive through the Traverse State Forest area for a more scenic route, even though it is out of the way. We both love the woods and going through scenic routes, and I loved getting to see new parts of Michigan. As we pulled onto Supply Road, it didn't seem more than seven or so minutes before we had our experience with whatever the hell we saw. Going north on this road, on the left side of the road is about 10 or so feet of clearing with just dirt and grass before it hits thick brush and trees. It was a little after 9 p.m. at this point, and as we're driving, I'm in the passenger seat, I notice this large, black-like dog on the side of the road, but something wasn't right. It looked like it was crouched down, as a human being would, waiting to jump out or something. It wasn't looking over in our direction, but you could tell its head was absolutely canine-like. As we got closer, the lights actually started to shine on it. It immediately turned its head towards it and stood up as it made this horrible hissing-like sound. I don't know how else to describe it. Both my brother and I turned sheet white at this point and had slammed on our brakes. About 30 feet away from us on the side of the road standing was this. I don't even know what to call it. I want to say werewolf, because that's the only thing that really describes what it looked like. Maybe it was a skinwalker, I don't know. This beast had piercing, sharp yellow eyes that, for some reason, didn't reflect at all when the light hit them, but they almost seemed to glow on their own, which was creepy in and of itself. This thing had a longer snout, very sharp pointed ears, and was massively tall. When it hissed at us, you could see how sharp and massive its teeth were, and how fast it stood up scared us both, as we had startled this thing. This thing honestly looked like something out of a horror movie. We had our windows rolled down the way home, and we smelled what I can only describe as if you mix garbage, decaying flesh, and wet dog together. We didn't really smell it until after it had stood up and we had slammed on our brakes. This thing was about 8 or 9 feet, I would say, with a huge build. Like pretty much what you'd see in a typical werewolf. I was motionless, staring at this thing. We only got to stare at it for what seemed like a few seconds before it let out this horrible scream that shook me and my brother to the core. It immediately started to pace towards our truck aggressively, with its claws and teeth bearing as if it were extremely aggressive and ready to kill. My brother and I screamed at the top of our lungs and floored it as hard as we could. He literally sped all the way home, and we didn't say a word the rest of the way. We didn't sleep at all that night, and I haven't been the same person ever since. What I saw that night truly terrified me so badly. My sighting took place seven years ago. To this day, I can't explain or find anyone else who has seen a similar creature. One fall night, I was invited to my friend's place in my hometown for a get-together before he moved away to another province, Canadian. The night consisted of playing pool, poker, and talking about the good old days with a few other buddies. Before I knew it, the clock read 4.45 a.m., and I had to head back to my home city, which was 45 minutes away, to pick up my girlfriend from work at 6 a.m. I said my goodbyes, jumped in my truck, and began my journey home. To get home, there is a town exactly halfway between my hometown and the city I reside in. In between the two small towns, there is a forest, which is a good 10-minute drive to get through. As I entered the forest, I almost hit a deer and decided to slow down and take my time to be safe, as I had lots of time to get home. As I approached the exit of the forest, 
there was a left curve in the road and an adjacent dirt road with a white wooden fence lining it, going up a hill to what I would imagine would lead to someone's property or home. As I was making the turn, I saw something in my headlights, the brights, at the edge of the fence. It was a tall, pale, milky white creature with a bald head. Its eyes reflected back. Close less. Its arms and legs are just as white as its bald head. I saw it for a second or two as it made a move to dive behind the fence. I braked, backed up slowly, and pointed my lights at the fence, looking for any kind of movement. I was parked on the highway, which was abandoned at 5 am my heart was racing, and I didn't know why. I must have sat there for a minute before I calmed down, didn't see any movement, and decided I'd better not go and investigate, or maybe I'd become a missing person, and continued my journey home. I talked to my girlfriend about it when I picked her up. Her first question was, why didn't you go see what it was? LOL. To this day, I STLLL wouldn't have gotten out to investigate unless I had a weapon or someone with me. So the only description I have of this thing is that it is tall, pale, bald, and has human-like features but no noticeable hair or eyebrows. I live in a small border town in southwestern Arizona, and there's not a lot to do around here, so a good time killer is cruising around. My girlfriend and I were out on a date three days ago, and by the end of it, we just cruised around talking and listening to music until about 1am we decide to call it a night, and as I'm driving her back home, we both see this giant, four-legged creature on the side of the road with its back to us. Its fur was rough looking, and it had this whitish-grayish color to it. I immediately thought it was a messed up giant mountain lion since they're not uncommon around here. I slowed down a bit so we could take a better look, and that's when it turned around and faced us, and that's when I knew we were dealing with a whole new, different thing here. It had the most ferocious and terrifying face I've ever seen. It had a long snout, just like a wolf. It had its mouth open, and we could see some big, sharp-looking teeth. It was hunched over, making its back seem like a mountain, and its fur was standing up just like a cat does when it's scared. With the lights in the car, its eyes seemed to glow red as well. After seeing this, I stepped on the gas and got the hell out of there. My girlfriend and I were in shock for a while until I asked her if she saw that thing or if I was just going crazy. She confirmed and gave the same exact description of the creature. After a bit of digging around, I found out that the only type of wolf that was once found here is the Mexican gray wolf, but they are critically endangered now, and they were extirpated from around here a long time ago. That type of wolf can only be found in southeastern Arizona and southwestern New Mexico. The sheer size and appearance of this thing rule out coyotes and dogs entirely. I am amazed and a bit worried about what we witnessed that night. What could this thing be? My husband works shifts. One morning, around 5 a.m., he had just left our bungalow to walk to the bus stop to catch the first of two buses to work. Being summer, it was very bright for the time of morning, and he told me he was just collecting his thoughts, thinking about the tasks he had to do that day and the list of groceries that I asked him to get when, from above and a little way off, he heard a rustling of leaves from a tree behind a wall of a garden. Thinking it was a squirrel, he looked up and told me he thought he was seeing things. What he said he saw was a small black-bodied sleek figure walking or running on four skinny legs resembling a monkey with a long rat-like tail. It looked like the head was round with pointed ears on either side of it. My husband couldn't see the creature's facial features as it moved with extreme speed. When it hit the ground, it scurried away from him, but he said he swore he saw what he thought was a wing. In the brief time he saw the creature airborne, which appeared to be pinned back to the side of the creature's body on the nearest side to him. My husband is a practical, no-nonsense man who is somewhat skeptical about the supernatural and paranormal, although he doesn't disbelieve altogether. He was slightly reluctant to tell me in case I thought he was having me on. We discussed the incident that night when he got home. He had already texted me about it, and I was intrigued. I did ask my husband if it could have been a large bat. After talking about it and thinking it through properly, we concluded it couldn't have been a bat, as this creature that my husband saw had four legs and a rat's tail. We walk that route all the time, to get out of the estate into the shops, before and since the incident, and we've never seen a creature like that. We are both natives to London, and we are unaware of such a creature even existing, so we are still trying to work out what this creature could have been. I was driving alone in a national park, very far from people, on a bright full moon night. A huge, clear moon is the kind of moonlight you can read by. The road went straight along the bottom of a wide, flat, mostly barren valley, then banked up and sharply left onto the ridge. It was about 10 pm, and I drove through the valley on full alert, watching for animals and loving the scenery in the crazy bright moonlight. When I hit the curve and went into that sharp uphill left, I saw something through my side window. White thing. It was rapidly getting larger in my peripheral vision, 
as though it had been moving parallel to me, but the turn in the road meant I was now in its path. So I turned my head and looked directly. It was white. Man-shaped but without genitals, and naked. A deathly, nauseating white with a greasy shine, completely hairless. It was crawling on its hands and knees, but it was half the size of the car, and it was coming so very, very fast. It had a rubbery face, distorted by hate or a scream, and black eyes that reflected the moonlight. The look on its face, I can't even tell you, I can still make myself feel sick from the memory. I believe that it was intelligent and that it wanted to tear me apart with its teeth. The speed was horrifying, it went from being a small white spot to spitting distance in the time it took to make that turn. When I unfroze myself and hit the gas, it was on the road, and I braced for it to run into my car door. And then it was gone. The rearview mirror showed me nothing. I have never told anyone. I have seen a few minor glitchy or ghostly things over my many years, but nothing has ever frightened me like that. It was looking at me. And I don't know what it was. I can't seem to find any reference to anything like it. I was around 7 years old when this happened. My room was across from my mother's, and she would close the door since I liked to watch TV late at night. I awoke in the night to find a man, not just any man, standing a few feet from my bed. It was pitch black, but his skin wasn't human, it was static, like the static you get on TV when the signal is out. He had blood-red eyes that glowed, and they looked at me. I tried to scream, but my voice went hoarse. I didn't know what to do. I was so frightened that I wanted to scream for my mother, but I couldn't. I felt so helpless, so I put my covers over my head and eventually fell asleep. I told my mother the next day what had happened, but she didn't believe me. Since then, I've been scared to be alone in the dark. Every day that passes, I start to feel like that memory was just a dream, but it wasn't. To this day, I wonder why I had to see it. I was riding with my mother in our suburban, I was 17 at the time. It was around 10 pm at night with little traffic. It was icy at the time, so we were traveling pretty slowly, somewhere around 20 to 30 miles per hour. There is, or was, one light there on the corner of the intersection across from the lake. What we saw was this sort of canine creature, which passed only maybe 20 feet in front of us and remained completely pitch black in the light of the street light and the headlights of the subway. Besides this oddity, the creature had legs, not including its body, which was taller than the hood of the SUV. It most definitely was not a deer or moose, as both of us had, of course, seen those and were very familiar with them. The shape of it was all wrong. The extra oddity is that it was big enough to cross the entire four-lane road with a median in the center in about four leaps. It stopped briefly standing directly underneath the light pole on the intersecting street, which is when both of us got our best look at it. Even directly under the light, it was nothing but a pure, dark creature. I don't have an explanation for such a large creature in that area. I'd lived there for 17 years, and neither I nor my mother had ever witnessed anything of that sort. It shocked us both, to this day, I don't have a clue what it was, and to be honest, the thought of whatever it was makes me very uncomfortable, if for no other reason than the size of it. It was October 2012, and me and my grandfather were hunting for whitetail deer on his property in a little run-down town called Reedy, West Virginia. We were not having any luck at the first few spots, so we moved to a different location down towards the bottom of his property. This place always gave me the creeps because everything down there seemed to be dead, the trees, grass, and basically no wildlife in this area. Well, after us sitting there for about 30 to 40 minutes without seeing anything, we were about to move. That's when I saw it. There was this very odd-looking creature that kind of looked like a horse with a wolf face, with this very ruffled and decayed look to its fur and skin. It was just walking through the field we were watching over when it stepped right over the fence. Keep in mind that this fence was made to keep horses in, so this thing was quite big, at least bigger than anything that should have been in those woods. My grandfather is dead now, so I am the last person to have physically seen this thing. I was 16 in northern Florida. My grandpa lived on roughly 3 acres, surrounded by thick forest. His trailer was in the middle. I snuck out one night to have a cigarette. I'm sitting on the stairs, and I hear a bipedal walking out at the tree line. Granted, there are hunters that use the woods, but this is 10 p.m. all of a sudden, all the frogs and crickets went quiet. I heard something clear in the brush. Standing on the edge of the forest, I could make out a humanoid, I want to say 8 feet tall. I could see the silhouette and two eyes illuminated by a street light nearby. I froze and went into a fight or flight response. Slowly, I got up and tossed my cigarette, it watched me the whole time. Finally, I grabbed the doorknob behind me, never turning away. And backed into the trailer. Locked the doors and shut the blinds. One of the more terrifying moments of my life. When I was 12, 
around 2005, I saw something that I still cannot explain. It was night, and I was lying on my bed enjoying the wonders of three-way calling when something outside caught my eye. My bed had a window about two feet away from it, and I could see the tree outside my house very clearly from the head of my bed. As I ignored my friends, I looked out of my window and watched in shock as a tall, metallic, light blue creature leapt from the base of the tree onto one of the middle branches. Now, there's no way in hell that a branch about three inches in diameter could hold a creature of that size. It was over six feet tall, had smooth skin, a muscular build, and strangely shaped facial features. As I lied there, in a mixture of shock and awe, the creature just crouched on the branch, watching me curiously. I didn't feel any fear. I was just a bit shocked at what I was seeing. After about 15 to 20 minutes of watching this thing sit there, it lifted its head and let out a call that sounded like a duck was quacking underwater and jumped down from its perch. I watched as it casually crawled back into the tree line and disappeared. I've never seen it again, but it's something that has always stuck with me. We live in the Northern Territory, Australia. Yesterday, my sister, 36, told me that she saw something in the yard. She lives in a rural area on a huge block, and it was 6.15 pm and the sun was still up. She was cooking for her family, they were all outside still playing, and she doesn't know what made her look up, but in the bushes she saw a long-legged creature, its knees were bent backwards, it was brown in color, almost like a hunched back. She described the skin as leather looking. It ran to another bush, and she said it was fast. She almost got the vibe that it was cheeky and was trying to play hide and seek with her. She didn't alert her family, but she suddenly found herself inside the house for absolutely no reason. She remembers walking inside, but it was kind of like, why am I in here? As she turned and went back outside, the creature was gone. She didn't see its face or its head, but she said it was definitely taller than a grown man. I own this house down in South Georgia, near a town in the middle of nowhere called Moultrie. It's just a double-wide mobile home that's been seated on a foundation, so it qualifies as a house on the insurance. Anyway, the house itself isn't old. So I lived there for about two years before moving up to Atlanta to take a better job. While I lived there, I smoked often and always outside because I have kids. So from my front yard, there was a large clearing across the road. It was overgrown with weeds and the like, but you could sort of tell that a house used to be there. So within weeks of my family moving in, I began to feel freaked out by being out on my front porch at night. During the day, I felt absolutely normal. So I convinced myself it was nothing and simply fixed the issue by smoking out back instead of front when it was night. My mom was over one afternoon during a small family grill out, and we were walking around the front lawn, just checking out my garden, etc. The sun was nearing setting, and you could just barely see the light fading over the horizon when she went wide-eyed and stopped talking mid-sentence. I ask her what is wrong, and she just slowly lifts her hand to point in the direction of the aforementioned clearing, it was across the dirt road from my property, BTW, I forgot to mention that. I look in that direction, and as I do, I see this huge dark shadow slowly go from what looked like a dog crouching over to a full bipedal humanoid shape. This thing was 10 feet tall. I mean huge, if it were human. So I blink and rub my eyes for a second before asking my mom are you seeing what I'm seeing? She confirms by nodding but is unable to make words. At this point, I'm really getting scared. Now I know that I wasn't mistaken by my feelings of being watched. I tell her we need to go inside. She agrees, so we begin to slowly walk towards my front door. At that moment, my spidey senses go off, and I turn to look back at the thing as it does what looks like charges across the dirt road towards my lawn. I panic, and my mom panics. Suddenly, the creature lurches back as though it ran into an invisible wall. We've made it to the porch at this moment, and I have one foot in the door when my mom finally speaks and says wait. It's. It looks like it's stopped. When I focus again on the thing, I notice that it has no eyes, no defining form, only the dark outline of a shadow overcasting the already dark background of tall grass and the clearing with surrounding trees. Again, the thing charges towards us but lurches back at the edge of my lawn. Freaked out, we assume it's paranormal, and there's nothing we can do about it. So we head inside, tell everyone in there, and of course they think we're messing with them. Eventually everyone goes home, and I discuss with my wife, who tells me to stop playing around. I wouldn't go out front at night again and shortly thereafter we moved out to Atlanta. I knew the previous owners personally and contacted their sons, my friends, to see if they had ever experienced anything like that. They say no, but strangely, they had witnessed angels at the four corners of the lawn before. I'm not Christian, and I'm barely religious, more of a spiritual thing. So I go along with it, since they are, and listen carefully. Apparently, 
their dad was a pastor at a church, and in doing so, he prayed constantly over their land and his family. Now, be it strange or not, the fact that they claim to have seen angels at the four corners of the lawn and that I've just witnessed who knows what attempting to enter the lawn being almost pushed back by the edge was just unsettling. The story ends anticlimactically with me simply not going outside at night, at least not out front. We move and try to forget what happened. I've since rented the place out to another family, and I haven't heard them say anything about it. Though I did request that they keep an eye on their kids and not let them go across the road there. I won't ever go across that street. And I wouldn't advise anyone else to do that either. This isn't my story, but my grandma's. My grandma's family, I swear, has something that follows them, or they're cursed or something. All kinds of strange things have happened to my grandma, grandpa, and my dad. Anyhow, this is the first thing she ever experienced. I can't remember her exact age at this time, but I'm thinking 5 to 6. She had stayed home from school one day, not sure why exactly, but she was the only child at home. Her mom was upstairs, putting some laundry away. Well, my grandma was down the stairs coloring at the kitchen table, and behind her was one of the bedrooms with the door pen. So my grandma is just chilling, coloring, and she starts hearing someone jumping on the bed in the bedroom behind her. She's scared at this point but tries to ignore it. The jumping goes on for a minute, then all of a sudden there's a loud thud. Whatever had been jumping on the bed had jumped off and was now just standing there. My grandma sat there for a second and eventually got the courage to turn around. She turns, and she sees this small, maybe two-foot creature, she called it a gremlin, standing there. She said it had grayish skin and a cloak type thing, so she couldn't see its face. She said it felt evil. Terrified, she bolts up the staircase. As she runs up, she feels like something is pulling her back, she doesn't look and just keeps pushing to get up the stairs. As she rounds the corner to the second half of the staircase, whatever was released to her she made it to the top and ran to her mom, started crying, and wouldn't leave her side the rest of the day. She wouldn't even talk about this for the longest time because she was afraid it would come back and get her. She only told me about it a few years ago, and she was hesitant even then. A lot of other creepy things have happened in that family, but that's the one that terrifies her. It was dark, a mile or so from the river, with lots of woods. We were driving. No cars are coming or anything. Night, like after 10, and not near a town. Right on the edge of our headlights, I saw something run across the road. Super fast. So fast, I almost thought it was a glare on my glasses. I didn't say anything at first because my husband does not believe in paranormal stuff, Bigfoot, or anything like that. I happened to look over, and he had a weird look on his face. I asked if he had just seen that. He said yes. I said something really tall and thin. He said yes. In this next part, I was afraid to say it because I thought he would think I was crazy, but I said it anyway. I asked if it looked like a very tall stick, like a thin tree or a stick from a tree, with arms and legs. And he said yes. It really bothered both of us. I've never seen anything like it and didn't even know it was a thing until I started to search for it. I've seen ghosts and things, but nothing like this. This thing was so fast that if you blink, it's gone. And when I say tall, like 10 feet, maybe more, we saw it just for a second in our headlights. I saw it take maybe two steps before we passed it. Arm swinging. Very thin. It looked like a twig with arms and legs. If my husband hadn't seen it too, I would have never believed I had actually seen it. I know people will doubt it happened, but I know we saw something. This happened while I was in junior high and still gives me the willies. Okay, I was walking home with a friend of mine later in the evening, like 9 or 10, so it was dark. Well, we were about four blocks from her house when we saw this thing standing about a block away. Now this thing looked tall, and it seemed like it could reach the street lamps. It looked strange, hairless except for a few long strands hanging from the top of its head, standing upright mostly but hunched over with seemingly extended forearms. I'm pretty sure it didn't see us because my friend freaked out, she was terrified, but I was fine until after the fact. I don't know if that's just adrenaline, or maybe I didn't process it quickly enough. This happening occurred in the early 2010s at the end of the night. I was living with a relative along the eastern coast of North Carolina at the same time I was going to college. I had been playing games with a few friends online. I was starting to get a little tired, but I remembered I had been asked to go out and pick up some milk. I knew that the local Harris Teeter grocery stores were open 24-7, so leaving my house at 1am to grab milk was a non-issue. I grabbed my keys and wallet before throwing on my shoes and stepping out onto the front porch. I stepped out onto the porch and came to a halt. Something compelled me to stop. I was suddenly filled with a paralyzing fear I'd never experienced before and haven't since. 
I was quite literally frozen in place, not even two steps out the door. I only stood there for maybe 10 seconds, but it felt like ages. I looked over to the street lamp where the palm stood and didn't see anything at first. Suddenly, from behind the closest palm to the lamp sprung a tall creature. I only saw a quick glimpse of it, but it fled off into the darkness and out of view. I heard it give a cry that sounded like a raccoon chittering and a pig squealing at the same time. Just as quickly as this creature had appeared, it had disappeared without a trace. I have a friend who is a huge supernatural believer, and you can bet he was the first person I called after this event. One of his first questions was what did it look like? And I told him this, the creature was just slightly taller than the palm it hid behind. It was a pale white humanoid, but it was missing a head. It was too thin and gangly to have been a human or ape of any kind, and it also seemed to be covered in light hair. There was, however, one single thing that I couldn't get my mind off of. Even to this day, it sends a chill down my spine and causes my hands to tremble. When I was standing on that porch, when I felt that fear take hold of me, there was one other feeling I had when I finally looked over. I was about to die. Whatever that creature was, its intent was hostile. I am truly convinced to this day that the thing wanted to harm me. Something saved me that night from walking blatantly into the dark. I don't know if it was instinct or some unknown force, but I will never forget my first and only encounter with the creature of North Carolina. One day evening at about 8, I decided to head over to visit my friend in the next village. The drive would be about 10 minutes if I took back roads to get there. So, I did. My friend lived on the outer edge of this development, it was a housing development surrounding a private lake, you might call it a gated community. So once I reached the entry point, it would only take me another few minutes until I reached his house. As I entered the development, the speed limit dropped from 30 miles per hour to 20. There were no street lights in the development, and for some reason, I never put my high beams on. It was a mild night. I remember having my driver's side window open slightly to take in some fresh air. I remember driving in silence, which was unusual for me, I normally always listen to music when driving. I reached a section of road that had barren fields on either side and woods set back. Houses were probably nestled back in the trees. As I drove, I noticed what looked like someone walking up ahead on the opposite side of the road, coming in my direction. Mind you, I was still going about 20 miles per hour the whole time, so it was probably less than a minute by the time the walker came into clear view. I got a quick scan of it from my windscreen before I got my car, and they were exactly parallel. This is what I saw. It was not a person. It stood on two long legs, with long arms hanging down from its shoulders. It looked thin. It stood at least seven feet tall. All I can recall about its face is the small features it had, but the mouth and jaw were notably large. And it had pointed things atop its head, two things going straight upward with something mingled between the two things. That's what I got from a quick scan and from my observation of it as it neared my car and my car neared it. As my car became parallel to it within a split second, I went from looking out my windscreen to looking at it from my driver's side window. In that moment, its face quickly peered down at me, and all I remember was the mouth opening wide. Out came a remarkable scream that I'll never forget. It gives me chills just thinking about it. It consisted of a high-pitched shrill or shriek, enveloped by a deep guttural growl. Both sounds happened simultaneously in that scream. I kept driving all the while. This was all happening so fast that I didn't even have a chance to be scared, shocked, or anything. I continued driving, went past my friend's house, and drove home. I called him to tell him what happened and that I just needed to get back. I was probably running on adrenaline to get back home. Later on, I was in total shock after it sank in. Had my driver's side window been fully opened, it would have touched me, or worse, taken me. I'm certain of it. To this day, I still haven't worked out what this was. I was on my way to go camping and had just crossed the Mackinac Bridge to get to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It was storming, and it just started pouring buckets of rain. It was the kind of rain that forced you to put the windscreen wipers on full speed, and you still had to slow down and strain your eyes to see. While driving up a hill, my daughter and I saw a man standing in the middle of the road. There was not great visibility with the sheets of rain, but we both pointed out the man standing in the middle of the road, and we were worried he would get hit by a car. He turned and bent, and then it was not a man. It was a huge black dog. We both thought it was a man at first, and then it was a dog, and I can't explain it. It could have just been the combination of looking up from the bottom of a hill and the rain. I just think it is odd that my daughter and I both thought we saw a man standing up at first, and then it was a dog. I stopped on one side of the road to help it, and so did a man on the other side in a truck. I am a dog groomer and always have slip leads in the truck. I love dogs and always stop to help when I see one in the road, 
but I hoped that someone else would be able to help it because my truck was stuffed with camping stuff and the only place it could go in my truck would have been the front seat with my daughter and me. It was still in the middle of the road, looking back and forth between the man and me. I was a bit surprised to see how big it was up close. I also felt uneasy and intimidated by this animal. It looked almost like a black German shepherd, but much bigger, but also wolfish. I have been around a lot of big dogs in my profession, and if I had to guess what breed it was, I would say a wolf hybrid. The guy yelled over, asking if it was my dog, and I yelled back, no. The dog was still in the middle of the road, looking back and forth between the man and me. In my head, I was repeating don't pick me, don't pick me over and over because a, I had no room in my truck and didn't want a giant strange dog that I thought was a person at first next to my kiddo, and b, it gave me the creeps. The man then yelled here, boy and patted his leg, and the dog ran off to him. Seeing the dog being taken care of, I got back in my truck and got back on the road towards our camping destination. My daughter was telling me how it looked like a person standing in the road, and then when it turned, it was a dog. We were both very confused. If it had been just me, I would think it was the driving rain in my imagination, but my daughter saw it as well. It may not be paranormal, but it was definitely an interesting experience. I was bow hunting alone one year and didn't see shit all day, not even the squirrels that chirp and bark at you while you're trying to be still. Walking back to my truck to go home, I crest a hill. I heard what sounded like a shovel scraping on gravel. The pitch and, I guess, tempo were like someone whistling at you. That high low high tune three deer come running towards me. They give no shit about me and bound around me down the hill. Tails are up, but they are not blowing. They continue on and stop at the corral by the cows. I see movement in some trees, but I can't make anything out of what it was. Moving stops, sounds stop, and the heart starts racing. I make my way to the corral almost backwards for a one quarter mile. When I get there, I kick myself, and I put it on my overactive imagination and ADHD. Feeling foolish and upset with myself, I start my truck and begin to leave. When I flip on my headlights, the corral lights up, and I see the deer. They were still looking up at the hill. I never saw what it was, but I will always remember that sound. I was rock climbing with two other guys in Colorado and was belaying one of them when the two of us on the ground heard something weird. The commands we use to communicate that we are safe at the top of a route are, name of guy on the ground, off belay, which prompts the belayer to unclip the rope from his belay device so the climber can pull slack out of the rope. The response to that command is, name of guy at the top of the route, belay off. The climber was approximately 40 meters up on a 50 meter route, I didn't know this at the time. The rope stopped moving, which isn't uncommon when someone is having a hard time with a move or is setting up an anchor, which is what I thought was going on. Then we heard it. A voice that sounded way closer to the ground, like close enough we could have had a shouting conversation, and way further left off route of where the climber should have been. It said, Tommy Sticks, off belay. I looked at the other guy in our climbing party, who was just as confused as I was. He said to me, what the duck was that? And we discussed where the climber should be at this time and that we shouldn't be able to hear him that well. The rope still wasn't moving, but I decided to keep him on belay. I figured it would be best to keep him safe and just feed slack through my belay device, in the event that it wasn't him. It turns out it wasn't. A few moments later, the rope started moving again, later followed by a faint, syllable counted Tommy sticks, off belay, that sounded way more like what it should have. We didn't really think anything of it, but we had been traveling down the wall and hit a few routes without seeing anyone. We also had a friend just a few months ago that burned in on a route when someone took him off belay when he wasn't safe. I remember seeing a video of a hiker, or rancher or something, walking down the road when he hears the voice of a woman calling him off the road. The guy stops to try to figure out what's going on, then just gets out of there because of how weird it was. So when I was a kid, my dad was moving around the country a lot for work. My mom and I stayed in California with family because she didn't want me switching schools all the time. Over summer break one year, we decided to stay with my dad while he was working in Savannah, Georgia. They had him stay in a hotel suite since he wasn't needed there for that long. My dad had already switched rooms once before because he kept saying something was pushing him in his sleep, which is weird to think about now since he's such a huge skeptic and, from what I remember as a kid, a pretty deep sleeper. However, I had never had anything happen to me while I was there until this one day in the bathroom. I had to go really badly, so I ran in to do my business. Above the toilet on the ceiling was an air vent with a kind of square-like lid, if that makes sense. I tended to stare at it and space out whenever I was in there, but this time a weird sort of growling sound started to come from the vent that had me freaked out. 
I quickly finished up and was about to head outside when the air vent lid popped off, bounced off the side of the toilet, and crashed onto the floor. Hanging out of the vent, I saw, it's actually kind of funny thinking about it now, what I can only describe as the bottom half of Mike Wazowski from Monsters Incorporated. It was like a highlighter green color, the size and shape of a cantaloupe, its skin was smooth but limey looking, and it had two long, thin legs with three toes that had freakishly long claws. The claws were literally half a foot long, no joke. It also did not have a tail. I screamed, and my mom came in, but by that time it had already pushed itself back up the vent, so she just taped the vent lid back on and hoped for the best, but I still cannot get that image out of my head all these years later. I thought it might have been a frog or something, but the long claws threw me off. Any idea what I might have seen?